In this episode, we are going to do the rest of the lighting up on the second floor. We're going to take a look at the architectural model to see what the ceilings look like. We're going to cut sections. We're going to cut 3D views so we can figure out what is the architecture of this second floor. And then we're going to look at placing light fixtures onto these vaulted ceilings and deal with hosted versus unhosted lights. We're going to look at even a custom light fixture that we end up using to make this thing work. Then we're going to show how to add light switches or lighting controls to our plan to indicate how things are switched. So stick around for a packed episode. We're starting off this episode with more lighting. We're going to start looking at the architectural model and look at the second level of this out of the box Autodesk Revit example project, which I showed back in episode one, how to download. We have this two story building as we've been looking at, and we have a parking area, a walkway to the second level. And we can see that it has a very steep roof. And down here at some of the renderings, we can see on the second level, it's very vaulted. And this is outside. And even at the other end of this, you can see it's vaulted here for this covered balcony. And it looks like it's vaulted inside the building itself. What we can do is jump into this architectural model. Again, we're in the architectural model itself not our electrical model. And these 3D views they've already created are really just first floor and some exterior. So we're gonna need to create some of our own. And let's go into level two floor plan. They have not created any lighting or ceiling plans for us to look at. There's no lights placed on the second level in this model either. So as we discussed previously, for lighting design, we typically get a lighting design from the architect or an interior designer or a separate lighting designer. In this case, we're going to assume that we have behind the scenes received some lighting design from a designer. So we're going to insert lights and connect those up. Now we'd like them to be inserted into this model in a 3D fashion, even though we're really only going to present two dimensional blueprints or drawings, if you will, for the installers. But it's a good habit to get used to doing things in three dimensions when you can to use one of the powers of Revit to help coordinate with other trades and to help visualize what's going on in this, in this building. So what we can do is we can create some sections to take a look at this. That's kind of the old fashioned way. And then we can also in Revit create 3D views. And one way we can do that is up top, there's a default 3D view, but if you click the drop down, you can get to a camera. And this little camera will create a 3D perspective view of whatever you place it. So let's start here right in this master bedroom. We're going to pick a place and here's where the doors come go in and out on the deck. Let us put a camera and click right there and let go and then just move your cursor to a, let's say a corner and go a little bit beyond. And as you can see, it drops a kind of a wireframe by default. Now we can fix this up by going over and changing the discipline to coordination, which will automatically get rid of the X-ray view. And then down at the bottom, we can change this to a consistent colors. First try shaded, and that'll give you, you know, a little more realistic view. And you can also go to consistent colors. So a couple different views. If you go to clear down to realistic, it'll apply some nice materials, textures, but it, it takes up some processing time. So I'm fine with consistent colors. We're just looking for, to get an idea of what's going on in here. The other thing you can do is hit, hit this F8, your F8 key by default sets up this little view heads up display. And we can hit look and hold it down. And now we can move our mouse around and look up. And here we can start seeing this framework of the doors and the windows. And we can also see that we have the peak of the vault. And even looking down this little short little entry into this room, we have that. We also have a peak of a vault. So everything is vaulted in this room at least. We can hit the walk button and slowly, slowly is the key here, barely move the mouse forward to get a little bit of a walk going on. You can stop, hit the look again, move around, and start looking in this bathroom. Now, it looks pretty dark in here, and I think what's going on is I think we have approached a door, and you can see if I move it too fast. Oh yeah, there we go, there's the door. So go inside here, hit our look again, look up, and it. Again, it's vaulted up there. You can look around. We could just reset the camera as well. But I kind of like walking through my project. And we're seeing some 3D things here. We've got 
shower. We've got the toilet. And we can continue walking slowly. It's a little hard to steer this thing. There's the tub. So this architect has actually modeled in 3D some of these uh, objects. And again, we're mainly looking at ceilings right now. And we can also see there's no lights in here. So I think we can conclude that ceilings are vaulted throughout this entire level. If we go back to level two, let's do the old section just as another method. So up top, you'll see this button called section up here in your quick access toolbar. You can also get it through all these things up at the ribbon through the view tab. And here's a 3D view drop down sections and, and things like that, even elevations. Now, you can try elevations interior. I, I find them a little tricky and I like using this section personally. But let's go into this bedroom and see if we have the same issue. So we're going to drop a section symbol. And you'll see this little dashed line that comes out here. This is showing the extents of the section. And you can see there's a little double arrow to move it. It goes way over here. So this section is looking way beyond the section marker. Now, for an elevation view from a section cut, I like to pull this back to just, to just get to the wall. And we can pull this in and kind of narrow down our section. If you double click, you gotta be clear out of it, escape out, and then double click the head. And now we've drawn a section in that room. And here's our lower floor we've already done. Section again, you know, there's no ceilings that we can see. This is just a dash line for the roof line level indicator. We have vaulted ceilings there too. We can get rid of the title sheet. And we can now move this section along. And it's still showing vaulted and we have some skylights that we are going to need to dodge as we place lights in here let's hope our designers uh, kept that in mind and back to level two and continue with the section here that i'm using again kind of as an elevation and that's all good there and then let's look at this entry hall And we have our stair railings going down. This is all vaulted. So, yep, we are entirely vaulted second floor. Another thing we can do is create a little 3D view just of an isolated area. So, if you can get to a point where you can just window over an area, let's say we'll take these bathrooms and the bedrooms. And then up here under view, there's this little box called selection box that isolates selected elements in the current view. And it draws a little box of that area. Now, there's a thing called a section box where you can drag the ed edges of this around. Sometimes you cut a view like this and you can't see that section box. There's no box here. So you want to make sure your visibility settings are set first. Escape out of here. And we do not have a view template. So we're just going to go to visibility graphics overrides. It's an annotative element. So go down to S and make sure that section boxes are turned on, and indeed they are. So we're good there. That's the first check. So it must be hidden in some other way. Well, go down to the bottom here, and there's a little light bulb. It says Reveal Hidden Elements. Now, you can use this anytime you've, let's say, hidden something by right-clicking it and saying Hide in View, Elements, Categories, things like that. Well, to undo that, you can go down to the light bulb, reveal hidden elements, and it turns everything red that has been hidden. And so levels have been hidden. This right here, hidden element, is a section box. Now, why that's hidden, who knows? But if you right click on it, you can say, not hide in view, but unhide these elements in the view. And then you can go down and turn off this little light bulb. Now we have our section box unhidden. A little trick there for some visibility issues you may run into. Hey, this is Rob, and if you're getting anything out of this video, I would sure appreciate you hitting that like button to spread it around to other people that may need it. And also, if you want to stick around for lots more electrical-only Revit information, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate it. And I need to thank all of my subscribers so far. We hit the 1K mark, which is a great milestone in this channel. So thank you all for subscribing, and I really appreciate it. But now we can click on the section box, and there's little drag arrows to drag the cut plane 
of that section. So as you can see, it really helps us see into this model what's going on in a 3D section. So you can drag this through your building. You can pull the top down and start to see things up here below the peak. You can see that these walls go all the way up. So this is a very handy tool, not only for analyzing a model, but even for presenting a 3D view in your model. So just want to show that to you as another tool in your arsenal of figuring out what's going on in these 3D models. So now that we know that we have vaulted ceilings throughout, we're going to have to apply our light fixtures that the lighting designer has told us they're going to use in here. But we have to get those into our model. So we're going to get out of the architectural model now. So close that, and we don't need to save it. And we are going to open up our own electrical model that we've been working on. So we will go into our electrical model. This is my residential tutorial. Open that. Again, overwrite existing. We are in a work shared model, and it just takes a minute to open. Opens us at this 3D view. Now, normally in our project template, we have a starting view, which is a easier view for the computer to process, but we will show that when we get to the video on creating a project template which is a very important part as you further ready your office or your practice for using Revit. But for right now, we're going to go back to our second floor lighting plan. So we under here lighting, second floor, we can close some of these that we're not using to help our scrolling. Second floor lighting. Here we are with just a blank old lighting plan. Let us go ahead and put in some room tags like we did before. Remember up here, annotate, go to room tag, and we've already set this model up to accept rooms, accept room tags. We've done that on the first floor. So now it's simply placing these tags within the model. Now you can also go to annotate. Go over here to tag all, all objects, and you want to hit room tags. So try that, and it didn't work. Well, let's see what's going on here. Try it again. Annotate, tag all. Include elements from linked files. Well, the elements that we are talking about are our rooms, which are actually part of the linked architectural file. We're going to include elements from this linked file and then go down and say room tags and apply that and say OK, and there they are. And like we did on our power plant, it just places them kind of in the center of each room and we can move things around as we like. And we'll probably further move them as we start placing lights. So now we get into the placing lights in your model. The first thing we need to do is what kind of lights are we going to put in here? There were none in the architectural model for us to copy and try to reuse. So now we're going to need to find some lights to put in. Now, if you don't already have a, a set of custom fixtures that you would use, like we do in our firm, you will have to find some light fixtures somewhere. Well, we can try the, what I would call the out of the box Revit fixtures that are in the cloud. So if we go to insert, like we've done with other things, load Autodesk family right here in the little cloud. They have all the families that were previously loaded with earlier versions of Revit. Now they're in the cloud. So you'll see all results. And we want to go down to lighting. And we did this on first floor. We don't want to use the architectural versions again because they don't have typically electrical connectors, which we need. So go to the MEP category. And here's a bunch of different lights. Now, because we have slope ceilings, vaulted ceilings, we've decided we're not going to use surface mounted lights. We're not going to use recessed lights. We want to hang some pendants down from that vaulted ceiling. And sometimes they can have, you know, a fan attached to them or just be a light. We're going to hang some pendant lights. So we need to find some pendant or suspended light fixtures. Now, these are all surface down lights, things like that, floor lamps. Now we get to a pendant light. And again, you can't see very well in these thumbnails, but a pendant light disc. Let's click all of the pendant lights, select them so we can see how they work and see which ones we like. So we've got five different pendant lights we can try. And there's other ones that are recessed. If you go through the whole list, you'll find sconces and even street lights, things like that. But we want to go with the pendants, so load those. Now, what we're concerned with is how do these attach to the architectural file. We do not have a flat level ceiling like we did on first floor. 
So how is that going to work? It will depend on whether these lighting families are hosted to a face or whether they're what I would call free-floating, non-hosted. So let's see what we get. A pendant disc will start there, and these are set up for incandescent, but we can change those. Drag a 100 watt, 120 volt in, into our model, and we get the little crosshair, which shows where we're putting it. Up here, we can place on the vertical face, and you can see if I put it on the vertical wall, it's showing a disc pendant, but mounted horizontally, which we don't want. We want vertical. So let's place on face is our other option, and it will find any kind of face. Now, as I'm down here, I'm seeing, you know, kind of a, what, a slanted view of it. And what's happening is, is placing it on the face of this vault. I'm going to move this section into this room and make sure we can see clear past the wall with this section view drag. Now let's look at this section view. So this is what we've done. We've installed this pendant light and it, and hosts it to this slanted ceiling and puts it perpendicular. Well, that's not what we're looking for. We would like this guy to hang straight down. And before we try another one, let's look at our visibility issue we were having. As we drag this guy, we lose it right there. Why can't we see it? Well, again, first thing to check, like we've done in the other episodes, is let's check our view range. Perhaps we are not looking high enough because the ceiling gets higher. There it is. It, it's there. It's just that we can't see it. So we need to take a look at our view range and see what levels we're at. And again, remember this architectural model comes in in metric and we have it set up for imperial. So we can use either of these. But let's see what our view range is set up at. Escape out of here. So we need to go to our floor plan and look at the view range of this floor plan. If you recall, we have a view template assigned to this lighting plan. Let's look at the view range inside it because we can't get to view range here. It's grayed out because it's part of, it's included in this view template. So we will go here down to view range within the view template. And it is included, as you can see, this checkbox means that it is included within the template. Hit edit. And here's what we have we set this up on the first floor to make things look right. We have the bottom which is just automatically associated level with the same offset is our cut plane. So we are cutting our geometry two feet above the floor, which lets us see some furniture, sinks, things like that. But the top is our associated level, which in this case is level two, and nine foot 10 inches above that. So nine foot 10 inches above is, and we'll draw a line, right here, and it won't extend because I have it cropped. But we can look at the dimensions, go up here to dimensions, from this level up to there, that's six foot. Our cut plane is up around nine foot six, nine foot 10. So actually our cut plane is at this roof line. So if a light fixture, doesn't extend below this top end of our view range, we won't see it. So again, we don't see it until we drag a piece of it, just touching or extending, let's see if we see it now, below this line, there we go. So that's how visibility is determined with this view range. And I have a, a video all about view range and that I'll point to up above if you wanna check it out in more detail. But what we need to do is, fix our view range so we can see clear up to the peak and beyond. So let's go back here and fix that view range. Now, if we fix the view range here in this template, it will change that same view range in our first floor. So this is an instance, and it happens quite often, where different floors, different levels, different floors have different needs for view range. So you'll find yourself possibly creating separate templates for different floors. And a lot of times on a, you know, like, you know, on a commercial building, the first floor may be extra tall, and the rest of the floors, two through five, for example, would be the same. So you can have one template for first level, first floor, and a separate template for two through five. The other thing you can do when you only have two floors and you don't need a bunch of templates is you can just disconnect the view range from the template. So go back to the template, and again, this include, 
And that's how I'll do. That's how I will do it for this project as an example. There's multiple ways to do things. In this case, because I only have two levels, I'm just going to uninclude, disconnect the view range from the view template. I do that. Now I can get to my view range independently of the view template from here. So that way, I'm not messing with the view range that's on my first level. It is disconnected also, but it stays the way it was before I disconnected it. But now we just have to realize that view range now is separate. We can get to it from here. Now the top can be changed. Should I change that to a higher offset? I can. And so what kind of offset am I looking for? My little line here. Let's get up past this peak. And we're at 19 feet 6. So I could set the top for like 20 feet. The other thing I can do, if I don't mind seeing what's on the roof and above, is I can set it to unlimited. So let's see what happens there. View range. And let's just go to unlimited. Now, the view depth is set below the top clip plane. This is the thing you have to keep track of. When you're at the top of a ceiling plan, as we I know this is a ceiling plan, at the top, Above the top is this view depth, so it has to also be set at least as high as the top. So you'll have to go down and also set it to unlimited. So it doesn't really affect how we see it. We can see the skylights, you know, now. We, it really doesn't have an issue with what we can see. There's no lights on the roof that are causing us a problem. So we should be good there. Now as we move this light in the room, we can see we see it all the way across because now our top of our view range is way up here. So we're good there now, got that fixed. Now we still have the issue of the, uh, the light fixture diagonal. Let's try some other lights. And this is a good example of what comes out of the box from Revit. And it makes you realize that whoever put these together must have thought all we have is flat level ceilings. Here's a 100 watt hemisphere. I'm a, I'm sensing the same issue. Yep. Let's try this linear. And it can go that way, this way, or that way. We'll try both. There we go. We've got our diagonal mounted light. I'm sensing a pattern here. Here's another linear, well, it's two lamp. It can be the same type. It might be a different cross section. So there we go. Yeah, it's a different look. Same thing, diagonal. And we have this good old pendant light fixture. What does it do? So this is the one we used. This is the one we used downstairs. And it's also the same deal. Hit the space bar to rotate it. Let's say we want it to go span. What happens there? Well, it picks which one it wants. And it's stuck to there. It went by center line. So it's stuck to that one. So as it turns out, we can't use these. These are all hosted light fixtures. And in reality, we need a non-hosted light that we can just place in our space that doesn't attach to a ceiling. Now, there's other solutions. Some people will say, well, you can just drop a work plane in here. You could do that. And what it does is it puts just a fake ceiling in here that you can attach things to. And we can try that as an example. So we can place a work plane. Go to architecture. Go over here to reference plane. Now this creates a reference plane vertically. So we would have to go to our section and create a reference plane. And let's put a reference plane wherever we want it, like right here. Now the only thing I would say is that, a note is that this reference plane goes now throughout the entire building. It, it goes, it doesn't stop at these lines. It's infinite. So now we have a work plane throughout everywhere. So if I need a different ceiling a mounting height than here that I do in here and here and here, I'm going to have multiple work planes. They're all going to be stacked on top of each other. How do I get the right one? This is not an ideal solution. So what we need to do is we need to find a light fixture that is not hosted, that's pendant. I can't find one in, I can't find one in Revit's out of the box. So now we are stuck with needing to create some custom content. I'll link a video right now of how you can do this yourself. So you can either do it yourself or you can find a package of some that are made and buy those. But for electrical, we really just need a fixture that has a pendant that we can stretch up to the ceiling 
and that works for our situation. It gives a good representation in 3D of that fixture without being too detailed, and it has all the electrical connectors we need. So let's get rid of all of these crazy lights, and we're gonna just go ahead and bring in one of my custom lights, and we'll show you how that works. And again, I have a video to show you how to create something like this so you can do it for yourself, and it's, it's a good exercise. Someone in your firm or in your circle is going to need to learn to do some of this family editing anyway, so might as well jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and insert load of family, and down here I have a pendant circular, and it's just a bare bones circular style light fixture that's pendant, and it loaded it. I need to go find it. Pendant circular, and I put ER for an electric rob in front for to indicate that it's a custom light fixture. So we will drag this in. Now. It comes in at zero. Now this is not hosted. You can so you can see that it's not saying it's hosted to level two, but that's all. It's not hosted to a surface. So we need to say how high do we want to mount this? Let's start at like eight feet. Hit eight enter. It's placing this light at eight feet. And let's just say the designer wants to place it right in the middle of the room. Let's go to our section. And we see nothing. Okay, another visibility issue. Let's deal with this. Why don't we see anything in this view? We saw those other lights. Well, those other lights, if you get into the internals of the family, you can set which level of coarseness or which type of views it is visible in. Right now, we see this light fixture. But what we see is a symbol. We don't see the 3D geometry of this light fixture. And similar to the receptacle, when you place a receptacle and you see a symbol for the receptacle, you don't see the actual box in the cover plate, the 3D elements, the extrusions of it. Same with my custom light fixtures. I want to see a symbol. And in fact, my symbol has another circle in it that over here you hit emergency and you can click emergency. It darkens in that circle. And we use this mainly in commercial work where this may have an emergency battery in it or it may be connected to a generator, things like that. Not so critical in, in residential. But it just shows that this is a symbol and you can't see symbols in sections. That's the first instance. But I'm also not seeing any extrusion. Well, if we look over here at this section right now, the detail level of the section can be anywhere from coarse, medium to fine. This will let you control the level of detail of the objects. Now, this receptacle that came from Revit out of the box shows the extrusion geometry even at a coarse level. In my custom fixtures, I don't always want to see a fixture at coarse. I only want to see it at fine. So if I go to fine, now I can see my fixture. Now, you may want to change that where you see it at medium and fine, but our decision is I only want to see 3D geometry when I turn this to be a fine level of detail. And this also brings up a good issue on this section that instead of having to make all these settings every time I cut a section, you can also create a view template of a section or an elevation view, if you want to call this elevation. So this is a good time to, let's create our elevation view the way we want it every time we cut one. So we can go to now this section view, which we're in, and we can't see it here. We need to expand something. It happens to be right here, this darkened one. And you can also name this section. But if I right click on this section, I can just either apply a template to it, or I can say create a view template from this view, the way I have it set up now, scale, you know, everything, create a view template from here. And I'm just going to call this, and for a custom view, I'm going to put the ER in front of it. We're going to say, I'm going to say elevation. Elevation electrical. Just to remind me that this is my electrical elevation. There it is. Okay, and I can set this view to that elevation. I do it in all caps so it stands out. So now I can do that with any section I cut. So now we have our light fixture and we put it at eight feet. 
And this is a pretty high vault, so let's let's go ahead and say that the designers want us to put this up at nine feet. So we're going to go up at nine, and it should pop up. There it goes, and and this is set up for nine feet to the bottom, not nine feet to the top like the other pendant down here. But what this pendant has is, if I click on it, this stem has a little up and down arrow. And let me turn the thin lines on; you can see it better. Click on it, there's a little up and down arrow. What I can do is I can gra drag this pendant up to the ceiling. So now, in a 3D or a section, it, it looks like it should. It doesn't have a canopy and all the details. It doesn't have screws or anything like that. But it is a good representation of this light. Now it's just a circular, but flat top and bottom. This is a very basic shape but I can change the height of it. So the stem length then, because I can drag it, is an instance parameter. So if you go over here, stem length, see how that's an, that's a, I can change it here as an instance. So each light that I put in, I can change the stem length. But it also has type parameters, which I can only change as I edit the type itself. And so this is where I want to duplicate, like I did on the first level. I want to give this a, a name. So we had already started our fixture schedule down below and let's review that go down to schedules and we have lighting fixture it's lighting fixture schedule two because i already had one but here again we can we can expand this out hold control down and scroll you can expand this out to see it it's easier to see in the video but we left off with l7 as our light fixture and we can just keep numbering these. If you want to get creative, you can call it P1 for pendant, things like that. Whatever you want to do, get the thin lines off. We're going to call this L8. And we're going to give it the wattage or VA that's on the cut sheet. And we'll find out this guy was only a 15 VA fixture. We can change the depth. Let's make this a nice thin... So let's give it like a two inch height. The diameter is one foot. And we're gonna make this a larger fixture. It's a two foot diameter. The light source symbol isn't as important for us as it was in the architectural model, but I like to make it a little smaller. We don't see it, but it just won't clash with other stuff. And the stem diameter, you can get this as tight as you want. Right now, one inch works. If you were doing like an aircraft cable hanger, you could take it down to maybe the smallest dimension might be 1 32nd of an inch. We'll see how that works. And then type mark again is L8, so we can tag it. Okay. And let's look at the section. And let me move a little bit away from this edge of this wall corner. Because we made the fixture thinner, the bottom is still at the same height, but it brought our stem down because the stem is attached to the top of the fixture. So we will pull this up to the ceiling. So now we can take a look at what this looks like in 3D as well. So let's go back to our lighting plan. And like we learned in the architectural plan, and be careful where you pick. If you pick here, you're gonna grab stuff. So you might want to turn off how you select things. But if we pick here and drag across this room and do our little box, create a 3D view, and we need to zoom in. We have our section that we can start playing with. And we have our ceiling in the way. But what we can do is we can turn our view to that side or even spin it. Or if you hold down the shift and use your middle mouse, you can orbit. So there's a bunch of different ways you can navigate. You can orbit. But that shows our fixture. Let's go down a little bit. That shows our light hanging there. It's kind of a disc light. It's got the pendant. And in 3D, it gives us a good representation, hold shift, of what it will look like in this space. Pull that ceiling up. There we go. So that will help you visualize what's going on in this space. So we can continue on now placing lights. And we can also tag this one. We already created a tag that tags the fixture type. We can turn the leader off as we put it in right here. 
that's an L8. And then we can just continue on. We can copy this because it, this one especially, it's not hosted. That's the joy of unhosted objects. You can copy them around. They're not attached to anything. There's quite an argument by many people that says we should use unhosted families all the time. I still think there's a purpose for them here and there, like a receptacles. It will help cut a hole in the wall if you want to see it visually. So you have to make those decisions. But especially on certain lights, I really find that the unhosted lights make your life so much better because you'll end up with models early in the design process that don't even have ceilings yet at all. And so, you know, there's nowhere to place a light fixture. So unhosted lights you'll find are very helpful. So that's what we're using in this second story. Now, the designers also want one as you come in here. So we're going to copy one over here. And they've decided that this two foot diameter one is too large for this little entry. They want the same kind of family, but they only want it one foot diameter. So, what that means is we need another type. So, we can take this one, do edit type, duplicate it again, make this an L9. And because it's a type parameter, we can change its fixture diameter and L9 for the type mark so it gets tagged appropriately. And there. Now, our symbol, I mentioned that this is just a symbol. The symbol is tied to the geometry so that it is, ends up being the same size as the actual fixture extrusion. And then we also want this fixture, let's get it tagged. We also want this smaller fixture in this closet so do this copy it right there so this will be represented the same way throughout the bedrooms i'm not going to show every single insertion of that through the bedrooms you'll you get the picture but in the bathrooms we want some wall mounted fixtures above the plumbing we had the issue downstairs where we couldn't see some of the plumbing we do have our view range down at two feet so it should cut any plumbing that's in here but we ended up turning off our plumbing we don't want it plumbing interrupting with our light fixture but we can turn it on briefly or we can turn it on in our coordination view now we've not created a coordination view for this level because we're not trying to match up lights but we still could create a coordination view for other reasons but for this example i'm just going to simply turn on the plumbing in the linked architectural we're in the revit link in the linked architectural model go down to the plumbing category plumbing fixtures turn that on so we can see some plumbing and all we'll see is the sink and like i mentioned before i do create an architectural pdf so i can refer to it without having to open the model so here's their pdf so we can go to the plan and look upstairs and we can see here there it is, the shower's in here, the toilet's in here, and our designers have decided we want a vanity light over the sink and just pendants in these rooms. This pendant is going to be rated for a wet environment, like a shower, and we also want a pendant over this tub. And let's go ahead and tag this guy. We can right click and create similar. It brings it the same height as the one we're creating from. We can always change this height if we need to, but we're going to put that over the tub. We're going to put one in here in the toilet room and another one in the shower. So what we're going to do is this guy is going to be yet another light fixture that's rated for a, a wet environment, wet label it's called. So we are going to create an L10. Simply copy an L10. It's the same size, one foot diameter, L10. Simple as that. And as we tag it, it gets the L10. The rest of these are still L9s. And we need to get this vanity light. Now, we already had one from level one. So if we go to our schedule, we can try to find it. Our schedule is just a start of a schedule. It doesn't have anything in here about the description of what kind of light this is, which would sure help right now when we're trying to figure out which is our bathroom vanity light. So we can add another field to this lighting fixture schedule. Remember our fields are selected from the available lighting fixture parameters that are in our lighting fixture families. So we need to find a field that has some kind of a description. 
This is where if you don't have custom parameters in your families, which you won't out of the box, you'll have to maybe repurpose one. Now we have one here called description. Perhaps we can use that. So let's try description and put that in here. And we'll, we'll change this to be all caps to match our headings. Description. And now in here, we can write the description. Well, it's going to be hard to do from this schedule view, but remember we can do it from any of our views and it will still be documented here because it is just, it is just reading the database. Let's go to our first floor lighting plan and L1, and we can start filling these in L1. Let's go to edit type and we can edit the description in here. While we're looking at the light, while we know what it is, we can say it's a, it's a suspended linear. Something like that. This is just a rough description to help us remember what's what. Eventually in this schedule, we'll have things like the housings being out of extruded aluminum, things like that. But for now, that's the basics. So L1, and then when we get down here to L2 was our track. Click on L2, edit this type, description. We will put in track. Again, just a basic description so we can keep track of these things. The mechanical, we're going to call this surface circular utility style. And then L4 is the more decorative. We'll go here and edit its description. Surface circular decorative. L5 is our bath vanity, and we, to get to that, we have to come over here. There we go. Edit that. Bath vanity. And we can keep going. So now you can see when we go to our light fixture schedule, now we have some description for these things so we know what's what. And we can do the same for our fixtures on the second floor. But for right now, we know that bath vanity is L5. So now we can place an L5 now. So let's go down there and we can see our fixtures. Here's the Ls. So it may be closed. We want L5, there he is. Drag that in. And now it will let me select which method I want. So place on vertical face in this instance. I want to place it to this face and I'll do it here where the geometry is a little less cluttered than all the sink. Place it there. And let's see what height we're at. Six, four. And we'll drag that over there. So now that light should be in there. So let's take a look at in 3D and see if we've done this correctly. We will select this little area, hit our 3D box, and then we're zoomed in. We can use this box to pick different views. I'm gonna pick this other corner. We can play around with the section cut. And we're seeing the light. We can do it even from a left-hand side. Now this seems low, but I think we don't have our section. There we go. We don't have our section going clear down to the floor. So there's our light on the wall. Here's our little lights hanging down. Now one thing I notice here is in 3D is that these stems just did the same same stem length as the ones that I copied or created from. So now I have to go in here independently and I can move these stems around. However, in the 3D view, you can't get to this instance parameter this way. We have to do it from a section. So there's a limitation with that. So in my section, I'm going to pull a section into this room. Now I can get to these and start adjusting these. So that's a limitation with a 3D view is you can't modify these instance parameters directly. Now I could type it in. Oh, that's a long suspended light fixture. A very high ceiling. But again, that gives us the 3D look we're looking for.
So we'll just go ahead and put the rest of these fixtures in. But let's say in this entry hall, they've decided to use yet another kind of light fixture that's more decorative. So we're going to take one of these and bring it over into this space. And in this space, they've decided to use a nice three foot diameter chandelier style fixture. So let's create yet another type, duplicate. Now, where did we leave off? Light fixture says we left off with L10. So we're gonna make this L11. And this is a higher output light and it's three foot in diameter. And let's go ahead and put L11. And let's go ahead and put the description in as we do these now. So this is a suspended circular chandelier. There it pops out larger. And we can look at the section first. Now we have another section we can use here. Click on that. Now this one we can't see lights because again it's not set for our fine detail. Let's apply that view template that we made already. And this is the power of the view template. Just click on that and voila, there it is. Simple. Once you've made that view template, you can apply it anywhere. So there's our light. It's the right, oh, it's about the right height. Close, it's close. And we can copy one. We can actually copy it from here to here. So you can copy it from here. And there's our light and we can get it tagged. Like that. So we'll do the rest of these like we just did. Now we also have some exterior lighting to deal with. As we recall from looking at that architectural model, we have a walkway here we may want to deal with. We'll say that the designers have decided that we're going to light this walkway just here at this end. So let's see what that looks like. So we will draw a section and use it as an elevation. Make sure our line, yep, we are there. Let's draw a section of this wall and apply our template. So what we're seeing here, this here, this is concrete, this is our walkway, and here's the railings. So if we go to the 3D view default, we'll find that it applies our section box. So let's turn off the section box in this view. We should save this exterior view with its settings so we can get to it again. We'll say exterior. And this way we can see again what's going on. Let's go ahead and orbit around. So here we can see what's going on. There's that walkway. It goes out to this car parking area. So we want to get a light near this doorway to light this entry. And what the designers have told us they want to do is to put it right here beside the door. So that would be about right here on this wall. And we're going to use the light fixtures that we used on the first level. So go down to first floor. And we're going to use this guy. Right click, create similar. Oops, second floor. And it's a wall hosted. So we need to host it to that wall. And we don't have a grid line in the way. So this should host nicely. And it's set up right now at six feet. We're going to put that up at seven. Mount it right there. And let's go back to that section. And you can see that light nicely mounts right there. Get it typed. It's the same one as down below. And then they've also decided to put one outside this door. Now we can cut another section or we can drag this section and use the little flippy up and down arrows to make it look that direction. Go back to the section. Now we're looking at this other deck which from here we can see this other side is this deck. Now we have a lot of glass here. Not many places to mount a light. So they've decided to mount it way over here. 
So in our section, it's going to be on this view. Here's the railing. So it's going to be right here outside this window. So in second floor, that ends up being right here. So let's right click, create similar. They're putting it right there. And then finally, the other exterior building mounted lighting we're going to do is out here on this deck. So again, look at the exterior plan. And this is interesting. The orientation of the 3D must be locked before you can add tags or keynotes. That's a good point. If you're going to do a 3D view, you have to actually lock it down here. There's a little lock button in this little house. Click on it. Right now it's an unlocked 3D view. You would have to lock it to add tags. So if you're ever going to do a 3D view that you want to tag or add text to, you'll have to lock it first. But we're looking at this balcony here, and we have walls and we have ceilings. So we're going to say the designers decided to just go wall mount lights out here rather than ceiling lights. So we're going to use these same decorative exterior lights on this balcony. And they wanted to put it just beyond the door so it doesn't hit. And another one down there. Now this one here, we have a grid line. As you recall from previous videos, the grid lines can get in the way of mounting things. So we need to hit tab to tab through all these stacked wall lines, grid lines, jip board lines, all these things. So we want to get it close, hit tab until it flips the right direction. Now we know we're hitting the wall. So we have those mounted and we can label these as well or tag them. Remember, these are smart tags. They're not just text. So there we go. We just need to finish the rest of these interior lights. Now, another thing I wanted to deal with in this video is lighting controls. We have not touched things like switches or dimmers or things like that yet. So I wanted to just quickly show you how that can be done. We can use Revit's built-in light switch family. So if we go down to lighting devices, lighting switches, and this is typically loaded with this template, this project template. If not, again, you can go to load Autodesk family and find the light switches. Now this one has a variety of switches and these are line voltage, typically line voltage switches like you would use residential unless, you know, a high end residential may have some digital lighting controls, things like that. But we're going to say this one's just going to be wired with line voltage, you know, toggle switches, three ways, four ways, that kind of thing. So we can represent that with these symbols. And let's say that this master bedroom is just set up for a single light switch. As you enter the space, it turns on everything in this master bedroom. So we can just hit this single pull light switch, drag it in and see what we get. Now, because it's not showing up, it's most likely a hosted family. We're going to go on a vertical face. So as we get close to a wall, just like a receptacle, it's drawing this kind of a backward S style of symbol for a switch. Dollar sign. And we're just going to mount it to this wall right there. And it wants to host to a wall right there. And it's simple as that. Now there's a switch in this room. Now, Revit does have a built-in switch system type of feature where you can assign lights to a switch. If you have a three-way setup where you have a three-way switch and a three-way switch, you cannot connect both of those switches to the switch system anyway. So in my opinion, it's not very useful. I don't use it, but I do at least, of course, show some switches in a space. And when I circuit it, I'll have actually an arc or a wire, um, a cable between the two to indicate what it controls. But anyway, let's go ahead and put some more switches in here. So let's say we're right inside the closet. They're going to have a switch. And it's hard to get to this now. Look what happens here. It's wrong side of the wall. It's kind of like the receptacle situation. Like I can sort of get to it here. But if you have that problem, then what happens is there's probably a shelf in here or cabinets that it's interfering. Again, get it close to where it should be and use your tab. There it switched. Now, another thing you can do, right click, create similar, a space bar will rotate it to different sides. 
but it also mirrors the symbol. So now that looks like a regular S instead of a backwards S. So it changes your symbol on you. So instead of using the space bar, you're better off to use the tab to actually select the surface that you want it attached to. So that's what I do is tab it through it. And then we can do the same thing. We have a pocket door, so our light switch should be on the latch side, not the hinge side. This is not a hinge, but it would be on the opening side. So again, we can just right click this, create similar, and it's putting them at four feet. You can change that height. And if you take a look at our section here, we have a section through here. We can see what that light switch looks like. Out of the box, they are just a box. Now, this one got close to the frame. So if you want it to look right in 3D, you may move that away from the door frame. You know, it's, it's a start. In our custom switches we've made and custom receptacles, we've added a little more a little more detail to the 3D elements so that it looks more like a switch. It doesn't need to be a 3D toggle, or even if it's a rocker switch, it doesn't need to be a 3D rocker, but you can, in a sense, paint, paint an image of lines on this to, to more look like a switch if you want it to look that way. So we can continue just placing switches in our model. If you want to do a three-way switch, there's a built-in three-way switch here. Let's try this in this hallway. Let's say we're going to have a three-way switch in this hallway here. And we want one at the end of this hall so that these two bedrooms can turn it off or on. This bedroom here can get to the one here. And then we also have a space out here that we'd like to switch. So we're really looking at a three-way and a four-way and a three-way, if you recall how that's all done. So let's try three-way. And what it does, as you can see, there's actually I missed it. Try it again. Get to the wall. Oh, it's trying to put it on the grid. That's why it gave me a, a, an issue. Now it found the wall. It puts a three, but the three gets buried within the architecture. So again, my preference on these is not to use the built-in three-way that has a label that can't be moved. I change it, and you can do it here, instead to a sa standard single pole, and then I just add my own text. Get a little three, and I can move it where I want. That's my preference, keeps it readable. But we can put another switch. That's the three, I need to get to tab through to get to the switch, create similar. I want one down here. This is all glass, and this is the latch anyway. So put it here. Again, I'm having troubles, hit tab, there we go. And then over here, we'll put it right there, and that one mounts fine. And then we can add our three-way to the end of this. And you can just drag that wherever you want. And then we need a little four for the four-way. Again, this is all line voltage switching. And so that's how you would do that. And we could go down to first floor and do the same thing, put our switches where we want them. But that's simply how that's done. So with that, we are done with our lighting plan until we come back and actually circuit these lights like we did the power. So until next time, thanks for watching.